Okay, so we have looked at three three things. You can take the sum of two polynomials. You can take the product. You can substitute values for x, and there's another important operation called long division. So let me uh, recall what long division of polynomials is. Again, it's a procedure which must be very familiar. So we we let's just do it by example. So let me take. Some more space. So let us perform long division of the polynomial f of x, which is okay. I am going to divide f by g, perform the long division procedure. So what do we do? We will write f of x first x cubed minus 2 x square plus 3 x minus 1. You want to try and divide it by the polynomial x minus 1. So the, the algorithm, the procedure says uh, first divide the, the highest power here by the, the, the highest power here. So x cubed divided by x gives you a quotient of x square. We write that on top and we multiply this x square by the x minus 1. So x squared times x minus 1 is of course x cubed minus x square and then you subtract. So when you subtract you will end up cancelling the highest power of x that is the way we it is designed essentially. So we will now subtract we will get minus x squared plus 3x minus 1 and then we will continue the same procedure. We divide minus x square the highest power here or the, the, the highest degree term with the corresponding thing there. So the quotient is minus x squared divided by x, it is a minus x and now you multiply x minus 1 by the, by the minus x. So that gives you a minus x squared plus x. Then again you subtract, gives you 2x minus 1 and we do the same thing. You divide 2x by x, you get a 2. and you multiply the 2 by the x minus 1 it gives you 2x minus 2 and again you subtract. So when you subtract you get minus 1 uh, minus of minus 2 is a plus 1. Okay, so we have just done this procedure all the way to the end and what this procedure produces is well uh, it is two things one is the quotient. So this guy here is the quotient And the last thing here, so why did we stop there because we cannot quite continue the process. You cannot divide 1 by x minus 1. The highest power there is a 1, we need x power 0 which is smaller than the highest power here. So you cannot continue the division. So what is obtained at the very end is what you would call the remainder. Okay, so long division produces a quotient and a remainder that is the, the key thing to remember. So let me just say what long division does. So given polynomials, I'll just often abbreviated to polys, polynomials f of x and g of x. What does long division do? Long division produces of, of f by g produces two more polynomials. So I started with two of them, it produces two more polynomials. Let us call them q of x, q for quotient and r of x, r for remainder such that the following properties are true such that, such that well what? Firstly r is a remainder which means it is something which is obtained at the very last step of the division which means you cannot continue the division anymore. So that is the remainder is something whose degree is smaller, strictly smaller than the degree of g of x. Okay. And so I should also say given non-zero polynomials, so I do not want to be dividing by 0. Okay. So at least I want that g is a, g is a, a, a non-zero polynomial. So maybe let me just be more precise here. So given polynomials f and g with g non-zero. 
so I cannot divide by 0 even in the, the world of polynomials. So, what it does it, it produces 2 polynomials q and r such that the degree of the remainder is strictly smaller than the degree of, of what you are dividing by and what is property 2, property 2 is the original polynomial f. So, what does it mean to divide it? It is just this is the quotient that you get on, on doing the, the division and then r of x is the extra guy. Okay. So, that is the that is the key outcome of doing the long division process you produce two other polynomials with these properties that f can be written as g times the quotient plus a remainder and with the remainder having degree strictly smaller than the degree of g. Okay. So, notice uh, so I should again qualify this a little bit more so the degree of the remainder strictly smaller than the degree of g or the remainder could be 0. So, in our case the, the remainder was something non-zero, but it could very well happen that you know when you divide it is an exact division that the, the remainder is just 0 and so observe that I said degree is not defined if, if you know the polynomial is 0. So, I am talking about either the remainder is 0 or it is non-zero and has degree strictly smaller than degree of g of x. Okay. So, here I should say r of x non-zero with degree strictly smaller or the remainder is just 0. Okay, so, that is what long division does. Okay, so, we are uh, uh, ready to sort of do our first proof let us uh, prove the following fact that the quotient and remainder are really unique. So, what does it mean? So, here is what I, I want to prove. So, here is a claim such q and r are unique such polynomials So, what does it mean to say that it is unique? If you find another pair of polynomials which has these two properties, then those polynomials will actually coincide with the polynomials q, q and r. That is, if there exist say if uh, let us call it some other name q and x and r 1 x are two polynomials satisfying the same two properties satisfying properties 1 and 2 then q is the same as q 1 and r is the same as r 1. Okay. So, let us try and prove this it is just a very elementary argument. So, let us start with the second property there it says f of x can be written as g of x q of x plus remainder r of x that is the original polynomial q and r that you obtained by the long division procedure. And now, what we are claiming is there, there, are, there is another pair of polynomials q 1 and r 1 which have the same property. So, I am only using property 2 now. So, the same thing has two different expressions given this what we will do is subtract these two equations. So, from this we conclude the following by subtracting that g of x uh, multiplied by so I am going to subtract the top thing minus the bottom thing q minus so g of x into q of x minus q 1 x equals now I will push the r of x over to the other side. So, I get the following equation that g of x multiplied by q minus q 1 is r 1 x minus r of x. Okay. So, the claim from here is that this term here q minus q 1 had better be a 0. Okay. So, we now claim this implies that q minus q 1 is 0. and let us prove it. So, this is the standard 
methodologies of proof, we will prove it by contradiction. Okay? So, we will assume that this is not true and then obtain some obviously absurd statement from that. So, let us assume this is false. So, suppose not if if q minus q 1 let us say is a non zero polynomial, then look at the left hand side, we have got g of x which is a non zero polynomial, you have got q minus q 1 which is a non zero polynomial and you are multiplying these two polynomials out. Okay? So, I am taking the product of two non zero polynomials, remember we had a, a, a property of degree. So, what can we say? If both these are non zero polynomials, the degree of their product the property of degree says degree of g times q minus q 1 must be the sum of the degrees, it is degree of g of x plus degree of q minus q 1. Okay, I am just suppressing the x there, uh, often we will just want to use the symbols rather than of x each time. Now, uh, so, let us let me also do that for g. So, it is degree of g plus the degree of q minus q 1. Now, what about the right hand side? The right hand side is r 1 minus r okay? and each of those is what do we know about r 1 and r? Now, we will use property 1. Each of them is either the 0 polynomial r and r of x could both be 0 or they could have degree uh, or they have they are both non 0 or you know one or the other is non 0 and the degree is strictly smaller than the degree of g of x. So, that is property 1. Now, what does that imply? The difference r and of r and r, r 1, but by property 1 we conclude that the degree of r minus r 1 uh, is strictly smaller than the degree of g, because both r and r 1 have degree which is strictly smaller than the degree of g. So, their difference would also have the same property or of course, it could be 0 that is also fine. So, or it could happen that r minus r 1 is 0. Okay. But notice that we already have a contradiction because on the one hand the left hand side is has degree equal to the degree of g plus the degree of something. So, the, the left hand side has degree at least the degree of g. So, this guy is at least degree of g, whereas the right hand side has degree strictly smaller than the degree of g. So, these two things could not possibly be equal. Okay. So, that is a contradiction. The degrees of the left and the right hand side turn out to be different. right? And why did we obtain this contradiction? Because we made an assumption which is which must therefore, be false. Okay. We assumed q minus q 1 is non zero but in fact that is a false assumption because it leads to an absurd statement. Okay, so, that is done. So, we are we are done with the proof of this uh, claim of uniqueness.